anger, frustration, depression, solution. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, what we want to do is we want to address this anger. Um, well, basically, let's, let's start with the frustration. Where does that actually come from? The frustration comes from the fact of things not going the way that you want them to go. Welcome to the real world. Things are not going to go, in most cases, the way that you plan for them to go. And thank goodness that's true, because a lot of things happen better than what we actually plan. So we would lose that option if everything went the way that we wanted it to. So let's be grateful that everything doesn't go according to plan. Um, so if we welcome that, then we, uh, we can eliminate frustration out of our lives. We also get to that from frustration, we get to the anger point, And that comes from because of things didn't go the way that we wanted. And then we actually feel like we're losing control of the situation in the process a lot of people turn to anger to bring back some of that feeling that I back in control, that I have power. Um, I have a friend that, that, that usually calls and we talk and, and he's usually telling me about things that are going on where he's angry about things that people are doing. And what we usually come to the conclusion is that it's not what the people are doing. It's the perspective that's been given because I'll take whatever he, you know, he shares and I'll give them some different ways to see it. And when we do that, each, each situation has a different emotion attached to it, which means you would respond differently to each one, which means, guess what? We have control of our emotions, which you guys hear me talk all the time. So it's not people get you angry. It's that you're allowing yourself, it's become a habit on the way that you deal with things. But when you first get to the fact that you realize you don't have to first off control everything you don't have to be the one that is always right you can start to eliminate the anger and the frustration from your life or definitely reduce it a lot and you can really just eliminate it if you if you really get control of that but everything is habits the way we normally respond to things become habits we think it's just that our emotions are out of control but it's like no is we've created certain ways that we respond to situations. And so a person that gets angry is because whenever again, they feel like they're out of control, that's their way of grabbing it back. And it's become a habit. And, and those, all these habits can be changed. Now, how do we get to that depression? The depression comes from the fact that we've gone beyond angry because the fact is now we're at a point where we feel like we have no power and we've lost all control. We're hopeless. There's nothing that we can do about the situation. Well, back to the emotions. We control those. You guys know I talk about um, the, five, the five steps, the process that we actually go through. And I'll share this here real quick. We have words. We have, uh, then we have thoughts. Then we have stories. Then we have uh, feelings. And then we have the actions that we take. The analogy I use so people that really get it is it's like on going on a computer. You have a word that you type into the browser. You type that word in, and then there's a list that comes up on the computer, am I right? Now that list is the thoughts, the things that are going on in our head from family, from friends, from the media, from past experiences, but all these different thoughts are coming in. Those are the different topics that we kept pushing on the computer. Well, from all those different topics, we started to write some stories. We put those different thoughts together and we come up with this story. And when we get through, this story becomes our truth. Doesn't mean it's the truth, it's the, the topics that we kept looking up, the articles, and gathering data and created, even if it's from personal experience, is still the perspective that we've taken, and we call it the truth. And that's why people get into battles and the war and conversations, your, your relationships and all that, is because you take that information and call it the truth, and you will fight to keep it when it's really information that you gather, which may not be accurate, may not be enough information, but you're going to stand by it, especially if someone comes at you in a way that you don't think is appropriate or you don't agree with the way they did it. Then you'll stand there and you'll fight, even if you know you're wrong, even if they're proven that what you're saying doesn't make sense. Isn't it amazing we'll do that? We'll sit there and fight for stuff that we even agree doesn't make no sense as we're talking through it. 
but because of the way they challenge us, we'll rather stand there and fight and be wrong than to just say, you know what? That's a good point. You're right. Folks, be willing to do that. So if we can get past the having to be right, having to control the situation, being willing to accept that things don't go the way we are, and be willing to be a person of, uh, what, which, what word should we use? The word of being able to be, well, accepting you ain't always right. And <laughs> being able to be humble enough, that's the word I was looking for, to accept the fact that there are some things out there you still need to learn. But how do we address these things, you know? And I kind of just covered it really there, which is a good way if you, if you can get a grip on that. But from the mindset, how do we get past all this to, to the conversations that's going on in our head? Now, there's a couple of ways we can deal with this. And depending on the situation that you're in, if it's something that it needs to be addressed right this moment, then you have to interrupt the pattern. And by interrupt the pattern means you have to either jump up, whether it's do jumping jacks, whether it's you start singing, whether it's, but you got to interrupt that pattern because even depression, and people don't like to hear this, but, but, but depression is not something, and again, I'm not here to offend you, tell you what to think, what to believe, that's on you. If your doctor's telling you to take drugs and stuff for your depression, you do that. But I, I agree with Tony Robbins and in this sense when he talks about, he said that is very inhumane to give people drugs for something that is not the problem and not going to solve the problem. Because he said, think about it. How many people are on depressants and, and you know, doing all this other stuff and still get depressed? Because that ain't the problem. We got to deal with the issue, the real issue. So, again, there's certain ways we can deal with it. One is we can interrupt the pattern, which means that we notice, because if you think about a depressed person, you know that their head's down, you know they're breathing shallow. And then if you ask them what they're thinking, they're thinking a bunch of uh, negative thoughts and then they're compounding those negative thoughts and the more they compound them, the more depressed they get. Now, as you guys know, I've said, um, I had never experienced the actual depression, so I didn't know what it was like. I just know about the stories, the stuff that I'm teaching you as far as the way the, the steps and until the pandemic thing happened and for two days I was down. And, and so I did get, get down for those two days, but because of I know how all this works, I was able to snap out of it. But, so there's, so what I just said, if we learn to change the stories, we can change the emotion. But I'll cover here real quick what's the best way to do it. But first, let me address if you're in a situation like at work or something, you notice yourself getting angry or something, and you don't have time to go through the process that I'm getting ready to tell you is the best way to handle everything. Then you have to interrupt the pattern first off, which means if you have to do jumping jacks, you got to sing a song, you got to do whatever you got to do. But you got to figure out, I used to play basketball with this one guy. Now, I don't know what went on in his life <laughs> for him to resolve things this way. But if a call went the way he didn't like it, you could see that he was upset. What he would do is he'd snatch the basketball from whoever had it. He'd run around the outside of the court, the whole court. He'd, he'd run around the outside, come back to the middle of the court and, and give the person the ball and say, okay, let's play. And I was like, now, I'm not sure what that man went through in his life that he, this is what he needed to do to get past that anger. Bottom line is, he figured out a way, and I'm glad, obviously, that he's using that method. So we have different ways. but So that's one way. He interrupted the pattern. See, that's what I was going to say. He interrupted the pattern, put his focus somewhere else. That's the second step, which means he went out and he started running to get his focus somewhere else. And that allowed him to change the story that this is not that important. This is not well, whatever story he wrote. Because you notice how I said there's steps to do it, but you can actually go in the other way in reverse, which means if I know how I'm feeling, I don't like the way I'm feeling, then, then what's the step before that? It's the stories that I wrote. Okay, I need to change the stories, which where that come from the thoughts. So you can work backwards and do it and get it resolved if, you, if that's where you're at. But the best way to handle all of this is to be able to live with the thoughts that are going on in the head and not fight them. Because what happens is when you fight the thoughts, you actually end up suppressing the thoughts and they'll stay there and they'll always keep coming back later where you're going to have to deal with them. Why? Because you just suppressed them. That's why the interrupting the pattern and stuff, that's cool and that is a method, especially one if you need to interrupt it right this second because right now you need to cool down or you need to get yourself together or whatever. So I don't have time to really go through the, let me sit here and relax and breathe because that's the best way. 
But if you're in a situation, you, you got to interrupt that pattern, focus on something differently, and then you can change the story, and then you can handle the situation. But you still haven't resolved the real issue is the fact that you get angry. You guys follow me? That method I just told you is a way to grab a control of the situation right this second. But we haven't addressed the real issue is why did you get angry? Why did you get frustrated? Why are you getting depressed? Those are the things that we have to get to and we have to ultimately address. And that's where the best method comes in to where we can really sit back and live with it. And you don't fight it. Even if it's a thought that the world will look at and go, well, that was, man, that was, that was totally negative or satanic or you know what i'm saying and that's like worst case scenario but whatever it is is going through it's not your job to sit here and fight it you're not doing the things it's the thoughts that are coming in but you allow those thoughts to come through and i'm not here to fight it because those thoughts you guys know every time you fight what happens what you resist and it's something i heard a long time ago and i know it to be true what you resist will persist so if you sit there and you fight the thoughts, then it's going to come back even stronger. And now you're really in a feud and you're just like, oh, this just will not stop. And what's going to happen? Give it about another 10 to 15 minutes or before the day is out, it's going to come back up and mess with you all over again. Versus being able to be at peace and relax and go, okay, thanks for sharing. I hear you. And you're able to get to it. and Or you ask, why? Did, how did I get here? What is the real issue that's why this is here and you'll find out you know like if it's something about love for example you go well i don't feel loved and then you're able to say because of something that someone did and you're able to hear that thought and go you know when it is telling you i'm not loved you're able to sit back and relax and go well where'd that come from why would i believe that i'm not loved i know that i love me you guys see what i'm saying and i understand but we got to be able to get to relax with that conversation and not fight it. Just let it be how it is. But just then we get to, well, where is that coming from? And it's, again, stories. We get to change that story in a way that we just go, huh, wow. Because sometimes that thing is actually what we call a negative is actually giving you options if we're willing to listen. Because we do get stuck in one way of seeing the world. And one way is this is the way, which is the way we, again, think it should go. It's one of those, uh, the example I use is one that um, this one gentleman was saying how he looks in all his media, his social media and every, in all his products and things that he has. He goes and he looks into the, the section where people are being negative and, and taking shots at his business or whatever, whatever it is he's doing. Not because he wants to stay there and not because he wants to live there. Not that you want to live in that environment, which is the voice is going on. Not that you want to live there. But is there some validity to what's being said? Is there something that I can learn from that conversation where I'm able to sit there and go, wow, you know what? I never looked at it that way. Huh. That's a different perspective. See, and I think you guys heard I shared this while uh, one of the videos recently where I was at an event and we were talking about the voice and um, I had made the comment. I said, man, last night the voice just kept talking and it was talking loud and I couldn't go to sleep. And, and so I told it, I said, man, I ain't got a problem with you talking, but could you quiet down just a little bit so I can go to sleep and I'll join back up with you tomorrow. And the whole room just start cracking up. But I did, it, you know, I, that's exactly the conversation I had. So that's where I'm kind of saying is where you can really get at peace. You really just do the breathing and, and, you know, where you really inhale. You know, like they said, it's five, 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 where you inhale. Like five, count five, hold it for five and then breathe out five and do that three or four times. I do it five times in the morning. I do it five times at night if you're in a situation do it do it a couple of times in until you see yourself getting totally relaxed because that's really what it is is we're really trying to work on the inside everybody thinks our issues are on the i shouldn't say everybody bad words you guys know but um a lot of people we believe that our conflict is on the outside and if we can get the outside to line up then we're in good shape but our issues on the inside because that's where our, that's where we are real 
challenge is that's this is what we're concerned about we're worried about how we're feeling on the inside am i happy do it the things that we can't see you know how's my health everything is we're more concerned about the internal than we are the external but the world has convinced us or society or the public whatever words you want to use has made us believe but the way to address the inside issues is with outside stuff folks that will never ever fix the issue that's why even for me the drugs still the same thing that's externals that is never going to solve the issue this is an internal conversation the fact that i'm depressed the fact that i'm angry the fact why are these things happening these are internal conversations internal emotions that i'm trying to address so why am i looking at the outside to get them resolved i have to be willing to say and sit back relax and have that conversation to just go huh okay hmm i never looked at it that way i appreciate the input that's a thought wow okay you guys see what i'm saying because the person that's driving you know the example is 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 that person that's driving in front of you i have family members that have me laughing on that one they want to argue about the fact that the person who's driving in front of them because they're, they're the ones that want to ride your bumper and want to honk at you and flip you off and do all that kind of stuff which is crazy to me i've never understood that but there's people that it and hopefully none of you that's watching this <laughs> but they live in that environment and they're trying to justify to me why this makes sense and i told them i said well if you were willing to sit back and allow your mind to think and relax you know what it would tell you just go around them why you get see this is where i'm talking about we're having these conversations that's just totally unnecessary They're, and they they really were fighting to try to get me to understand why this person just should move out the way folks why are you stressing yourself why are you getting angry frustrated and and, and hopefully they don't get to depression but why would you be because a person is what gives you the right you want to drive 20 miles over the speed limit what makes you right to tell somebody because they choose to drive their way they're wrong but you're right because you're willing to drive 20 miles over get get over yourself you know if you're in that situation go around them and move on you'll watch the peace that goes on your life when you're able to live like that when you're able to look at things um i use that analogy even in my book where i talk about you know, you come to, you're going up a road and all of a sudden there's a tree that's blocking the road. Where are you going with that conversation? Is your mind going to say, oh my goodness, here we go. And now my day's thrown off. Now I'm going to get blocked here. And if you stay with that, your mind's going to continue to add more negativity. But you can hear that and go, well, that's true. That could, that could be right. That could kind of slow things down. Or you could just say, you know, during the middle of the conversation, you go, but what if that was actually there to to save me from something down the road and to keep me from guess what the mind will make a shift and it'll start agreeing with you and it'll start finding stuff to go down that path see you can use it and make it work for you or you can let it work against you because it's going to come as tony robbins shares again he says if you ask stupid questions you'll get stupid answers and it's true you can't ask your mind well, why am I so fat and think it's going to say, oh, no, because we're eating well. and we No, it's going to start saying because you're a pig, because you keep eating all those donuts. It's, it's going to help you feel bad because it's going to join in and help you find a reason to the crazy question that you ask. But if you're able to say, how do I get healthy? You guys see how we changed the, the question. All of a sudden it says, huh, how can we get healthy? See, that means now you're pushing different categories on um, when you put that word uh, uh in the browser remember we we're talking about the computer example now you're looking for healthy healthy body and now different topics will show up and now you get to go through those and have different conversations so really that's the key is understand all this is about cleaning up the inside again sound familiar when i keep saying get rid of your problems <laughs> yeah, sound familiar this is not 
about other people. This is not about external things. This is all about cleaning up the inside. And the, and the most productive is not to fight the voice. Because if you what you resist will persist. If you fight it, it will keep attacking, keep bothering you. It'll bring that subject up and it'll just be like, oh, will you stop? Man, we don't have this conversation five times a day and it's because you're fighting it versus saying, okay, let's talk. What's going on? So why do you think that way? Why do you feel that way? And I know some of you be like, man, people that talk to themselves is crazy. Well, what do you think you was doing when you was fighting with the voice? <laughs> that's, because guess what? That's all we do all day anyway is talk to ourselves. So we might as well make this a productive conversation. Find out, which is kind of the same thing when I tell you about with a partner. How did you get to that way of thinking? What, what has happened in your life to get you to this point? And folks, if you start doing that with yourself, and, 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 and that, while I'm thinking about this, journaling, that's the most incredible way to actually deal with this because the more you use your senses, that they get involved in anything in your life, the more that it will impact you, which means it will become a part of you. So if you're writing something down, so you're actually writing, that's one of your, 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 your senses, you're actually visualizing it, you're seeing it. The more of your senses, again, that you get involved, the more impact it will actually have on you. So now you get to go to the journal, you get to, and again, we're not fighting the conversation, we're just flowing. You're writing in the journal, you're just flowing. Now, for those of you, unfortunately, that you've been programmed or you think, especially for guys, if you're thinking, well, journaling, that's like writing a diary. That's what women do. This is, that, that's something totally different. A diary is a diary. The journaling is saying, I'm experiencing my life and, and this is what I'm doing. I'm keeping track of my journey because this is something you'll even be able to pass on from next. You're able to see where you were where you are and, and getting ready to create your future. So you're able to have that conversation, you're writing it down and you're like, what? And again, you're just flowing. So when you write, don't sit there trying to correct it. Don't sit there trying to clean it up. Don't sit there trying, oh, I spelled that word wrong. None of that, just flow and get it out. And when it gets done, you just go, huh, you through? All right, well, let's take a look at this. And now we get to analyze and go, whoa, now, where, where did that thought come from? Now, what would, now is this productive for me or not? You guys see this? We're having a conversation, and we're able to address this. And that journaling, the reason it's so awesome is because now you'll be able to watch the progress. You'll be able to see where you used to be a person that got angry, got frustrated. Uh, sometimes we get in depression to now you're a total peace with, when things occur. And, and, and now you can tell people when they go on, what changes did you make? Oh, I can tell you exactly what it is. Man, this happened like last Thursday or happened two months ago or happened a year ago. It happened two years ago. Man, this is where I was. And this is something. That, and, and what ends up happening, this will become, when you get through, it will become the greatest book you've ever read. And for some of you, it may be the book that you decide to write when you're able to turn around and tell people, this is where I was. This is where I am. Because I was able to sit back, I was able to look at it, have the conversation, and get myself on track. You become your self-counselor. Because, folks, you're equipped to handle all things that come your way. You were born that way. The world has convinced you that you, that you don't have the gifts in order to do it. But you are. That's why you guys hear me say, you were born perfect. I know some people were going to argue that point, and, 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 and that's okay. But you were born perfect. Everything you, and the reason I say that, everything you need in order to make it here on earth, you were born with. You were, it's already there. But you're in a society that is not perfect, that is always changing. So how can a perfect person survive in a system that's not perfect? A system that's always changing. A system that maybe a year, a couple years ago, it was illegal to sell weed. Now it's on every corner. So that system is always changing so understand and the reason again why that is important for you to understand is because then you recognize 
yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm perfect. System messed up. But how do I make the adjustments so that I can make it in this system in which we have? Because as long as you understand that I'm in control, then you don't live in a victim world. But when you think that the world is the issue, you're a victim and there's nothing you can do about it. Everything I do is about getting you to take responsibility for your life and understand that you are in control of your destiny. So again, the easiest way, relax, have a conversation, flow through, journal to get this stuff out. If you need the quick fix, interrupt the pattern, which means jump up, do some exercise, sing a song, but change your focus. If, if, if it's going to look crazy because you're in a room where you can't jump up, then you need to focus on something different real quick, which means, you know, if they're sitting there hollering about something else, you go, well, what did, which some of us do anyway. You start thinking, huh, so what am I doing for lunch? Or what am I doing? See, you're, you're changing your focus. See, you can't get in a state of being depressed if you can't stay on that subject. You guys follow? If you stay on the subject and you keep adding bad stories, that's what leads you to depression. But if I interrupt the story, start to change and make it focus on something differently, then I've interrupted that so I can no longer continue down that path. So you control that. Make sure you understand that and have some fun with this. Learn to journal and folks, you can laugh at yourself, honestly, because when you start journaling and you start looking at some of the things that come through your thought process, you'll sit there like, oh my goodness, where did that come from? Now that is crazy, man. So anyway, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who are into the, you know, working on the relationships, I'll see you on Thursday, on, um, on Relationship Thursday. For the, those of you who we're really focusing on loving ourselves, I'll see you on uh, Self Love Monday. But also, take a look when you get a chance. Run over to ronsbusinesscard.com. Again, ronsbusinesscard.com. It has all the different projects I have on, I, I, that I'm in, that I have out. Um, I have three new projects getting ready to come out. One is uh, the video series of my book where I actually, I didn't read the book, but I actually just went through and uh, took the topics and spoke from the heart. Uh, kind of what we're doing here, but I did it on e every chapter of the book. And so there's a lot of things that are in the video series that aren't in the book because there's been topics that have come up since the book that people have asked me and I squeezed some of those topics into the different chapters where they fit. And so it's a lot of it is just good new information. Yeah, it is good information, but it's, it's some of uh, new information and then I came out with a series. It's the Committed uh, Relationship Series. And then the, uh, what's the other one? It's Finding Love Series. So anyway, those will hit probably within the next week. And they'll end up showing up on ronsbusinesscard.com also. They'll be there. But that's the easiest way to find out everything that I've got going on. Folks, please uh, take, take a look over there. If there's things that you, uh, you can catch me on all, any of my social medias. Um, share insights on things that you liked you didn't like you did you agreed with you disagreed with topics you'd like for me to cover because folks we're all growing no one has all the answers and i am definitely open to gathering more data and 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 because like i tell my dad you know and you guys have heard me share that too my dad's like boy ain't no wrong with you you good people i say i'm gonna be here anyway i might as well become a better brother better cousin better uncle better husband when we get back in that, that, that particular role. Um, but I'm going to be here anyway. Why not strive to get better? So as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye-bye.